Thanks very much. So we've had some great presentations today. Unfortunately, I haven't had much uh, radio training, haven't been on television, and I'm only a quarter Irish. So it's uh, <laughs> with a little bit of trepidation that I take the, uh, the podium now. So uh, I suppose I'll try to make up for uh, what I can't provide an excitement with brevity. Um, but um, uh, another reason why I approach the, the podium with trepidation is because the uh, topic of our um, discussion was idle capacity. So again, that's not very exciting either. But um, really the thesis that we were given was to talk about uh, the fact that OPEC member states, uh, excluding Saudi Arabia, were, re were reluctant to invest in uh, additional oil capacity uh, because of the risk that it would be uh, left idle. Uh, and then that supply would be expensive, um, providing a sunk cost for companies and countries. So the question was what solutions could uh, companies and countries do to avoid that kind of issue? Well, we started off by disagreeing with the premise, um, particular given, particularly given the fact that we're here in Abu Dhabi, which does have uh, some quite aggressive uh, plans to uh, increase uh, capacity, sustainable capacity, uh, and given the fact that we're just um, in the same region well, Saudi Arabia, we were told to exclude. They've got their uh, spare capacity. Uh, Iraq, uh, as we've heard, has quite ambitious uh, projects as well. Um, so we felt that there was a lot of uh, other uh, expansion plans coming in uh, in OPEC that would provide some uh, additional spare capacity. Uh, there were some countries that were not able, uh, as some of our um, panel members said, not able even to meet their uh, OPEC requirements or able to meet their OPEC requirements with difficulty. But it seemed that those uh, countries balanced out. Um, uh, so perhaps while countries like, like Nigeria might have some uh, production difficulties, uh, they were being balanced out by uh, countries like Iraq, uh, potentially by countries, by countries like Iraq uh, and, and by the UAE with their expansion plans. Uh, then we drew a distinction between uh, spare capacity and idle capacity. Uh, the thought being that spare capacity I is an uh, additional capacity that you've got there ready and that you attend, intend to use. And it also has a certain utility uh, in uh, helping to impact or dampen uh, price swings. So uh, that was different than idle capacity, which would then simply be something that you've built up, invested in, and, and are not able to use. Uh, so we wanted to uh, look at spare capacity as, as say, uh, a virtuous investment. Um, in determining how you get to spare capacity rather than getting stuck with idle capacity, uh, the idea came up that partnership uh, was very important, partnership between uh, IOCs and NOCs. Um, that's uh, kind of a theme that I've unfor unfortunately heard many uh, conference presentations on. Uh, but we kind of got into that a little bit more to decide, well, what does that actually mean? Um, and that meant really understanding the needs uh, of the partners. So uh, the IOCs would have to understand the strategic uh, view of, of the NOCs in expanding their oil industry, uh, seeking to have investment in the country, and also in developing the nationals of that country, while the NOCs would need to understand the uh, for-profit motives of, of the company. Uh, an IOC wants to come in, invest in uh, capacity, and then, of course, be able to sell that and, and turn a profit. Um, the benefit, then, or the idea of what the IOCs could bring to the table would be in helping to add uh, efficiency to, uh, to a process or a project uh, to make sure that, that uh, again, that, that capacity is spare and can be used uh, economically when ne it needs to be called on. Uh, and then adding implementation, not just bringing a technology like, uh, like EOR to the table, but actually showing uh, its partner how to use that uh, to the best of the ability, and then uh, helping uh, develop the local talent as has been done uh, here in Abu Dhabi and in a lot of the countries in the region. When we looked at some of the different uh, OPEC countries, uh, obviously the experience uh, of a lot of the table members was, was this region um, from having been here and worked here. Uh, so they saw that there was a heavy amount of investment in local capacity uh, of, of talent 
and uh, we thought that that was perhaps one thing that was lacking perhaps in some of the other countries where uh, they're having difficulty in maintaining uh, even production, much less planning down the road. So we talked about countries like Nigeria and, and Venezuela. Uh, those countries also showed us a lesson that stability was also very important in terms of the, the government regime. Uh, one of the table members pointed out that since uh, his uh, large IOC has been here in the, since the 20s, there's been three rulers in, in Abu Dhabi. Uh, so that contrasts with other countries uh, that have uh, more difficulty in maintaining stable governments. A stable government uh, will allow a long-term strategy and it gives the uh, confidence to the IOC that you're going to have a long-term partner who also has that give and take uh, in terms of um, your goals for what their production is. Uh, finally, then getting to the question of what the producers can do uh, in order to impact price, well, beyond doing exactly uh, those five things that we, that we discussed about, um, there weren't a lot of, uh, of realistic su uh, suggestions. Um, shoot the speculators was one, but that was quickly withdrawn. Uh, so we came down to um, basically uh, coming into a good partnership, creating realistic goals for what the capacity growth is going to be so that you ensure that you've got spare capacity uh, that you expect to use uh, and that you can be uh, profitable with rather than having idle capacity.